Hare Krishna, it's got quite a few devotees with us. We've got nine or perhaps ten, eleven devotees with us now. Well, welcome everyone if you just joined us. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Um, and we are on chapter four. You can see it on the screen, which is chapter four is entitled The Bhakta. The devotees, and we're on text 79. So, if anyone would like to begin reading, you're welcome to. Um, uh, sh shall I start? Yes, why not? You can. Text 79. Text, text, <clears throat> text 79. Sri Parikshit said, upon hearing these words, Sri Narada became uncontrollably eager to see the lotus feet of Krishna. He simply wanted to go to Dwarka and live there forever. He stood up, sat down and stood up again. He danced enthusiastically, filled with inner joy and made loud cries, commentary. Hearing the description of the glories of Krishna and his beloved devotees, Narada remembered how much he had enjoyed staying in Dwarka whenever he could. Eager to engage in the worship of Lord Krishna, O oh best of the gurus, Narad Muni stayed for some time in Dwarka, which was always protected by the arms of Govinda, Bhagavatam 11.2.1. Though Hanuman was still speaking, Narada could not help but interrupt him with shouts of joy. By this time, Narada's ecstasy had become uncontrollable. Uh, text 80. Hanuman's heart was immersed in transcendental tastes from speaking about the Pandavas. With his ecstasy raised even higher by Narada's dancing, he continued to speak about the topics. Commentary. Hanuman did not join Narada in dancing because Hanuman's ecstasy lay in speaking to glorify the Pandavas more and more. His attraction to this katha was not a mundane urge to speak for self-satisfaction, but a rasa, a transcendental sweet taste known, uh, known only to pure Vaishnavas. This katha rasa acts like an intoxication liquor. It makes those who drink it forget the pain of material life by immersing them in complete satisfaction and happiness. Hanuman was not annoyed when Narada interrupted his speech with ecstatic dancing and shouts of joy. Quite the opposite. His ecstasy increased and he felt inspired to go on speaking more and more. Text, text 81. Sri Hanuman said, all the calamities that befell the Pandavas were, were most auspicious and desirable because those calamities made the personality of Godhead anxious to join the Pandavas quickly. Commentary. Whenever Krishna heard the Pandavas were in danger, he would want to drop whatever he was doing and go at once to help them. And since the Pandavas' misfortune was auspicious, how much more auspicious was their good fortune? Krishna helped the brothers kill Jarasandha and then washed the feet of everyone at Yudhishthira's Rajasriya sacrifice. So who can, who can adequately describe the glories of the Pandavas' loving exchanges with Krishna? Before, Hanuman had said that the Pandavas' troubles were not real, that they were only a show arranged by Krishna to advertise the Pandavas' steadfastness and other saintly qualities. Now Hanuman speaks differently, even taking for granted that the calamities were real, as they seem to ordinary eyes. Those troubles brought the Pandavas the greatest good fortune. Text, text 82. O Pandavas, pure love had subdued you, ignoring discrimination and etiquette. You engage in my Lord as your messenger and charioteer. Commentary. In his trance of Girtan ecstasy, Hanuman addresses the Pandavas as if they were present before him. He is astounded at their behavior with Krishna, violating the properties that forbade servants from giving orders to their master. The Pandavas failed even to consider the menial services like carrying messages are not tasks in which to engage Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Lord of the entire universe, the su supervisor of Brahma and all the demigods, the Supreme Lord submits to such treatment only with his dearest devotees. 
Text 83. Ah, you Pandavas must know some transcendental herb or mantra that can enchant the most powerful enchanter. Commentary. Because the Pandavas are under the sway of Brahma, they can be excused for transgressing reason and etiquette. But why does the personality of Godhead agree to be dealt with lightly? Hanuman sur surmises that brothers must know some magic that they can hypnotize the Lord. Krishna, Krishna is the supreme magician, the enchanter of everyone else. So whatever they can enchant him must be extra, extraordinary. No such magic herb or mantra is to be found anywhere in this world. The real identity of this magic will be revealed by Hanuman in text 85. Krishna is enchanted only by the perfect love of his intimate devotees. Text 84. Parikshit Maharaj said, O mother, O celebrate, celebrated wife of the son of the Pandavas. After Hanuman said this, he repeatedly jumped up into the air, higher and higher, joining sage Narada in dancing. He then continued to speak. Commentary, when pure devotees are glorified, everyone in relation to them is glorified, including their families and disciples. Uttara, to whom Parikshit is speaking, is both his mother and the wife of Abhimanyu, who is referred to here as Pandeveya, because he was the son of Arjuna and Subhudra. Thus, Srimati Uttara shared in the Pandav's glory by marriage and by being Parikshit's mother. Text 85. O master of all masters, you are conquered by your great affection for your devotees. This is how you attract their hearts. Commentary. Now Hanuman addresses Lord Krishna. You are the Lord of all the lords of the universe, but you become a chariot driver and order carrier for the Pandavas. This is certainly possible because you, your, love, your love for your devotees makes you its slave. Having lost your independence, you are forced to do whatever your devotees want. On various occasions, the personality of Godhead has admitted his dependence on his devotees. For example, he once confessed to Durvasa Muni, I am completely under the control of my devotees. Indeed, I am not at all independent because my devotees are completely devoid of material desires. I sit only within the core of their hearts. What to speak of my devotees, even the devotees of my devotees are very dear to me. But, but doesn't the Lord's loss of independence pains, pain the hearts of the devotees who love him? No, everything the personality of God had does attract the devotees' hearts, which, is, which he fills with pleasure. He acts only for the satisfaction of his devotees and is always careful to avoid causing them anxiety. In the Lord's own words cited above, he is Bhakta Jana Priya, affectionately concerned for the happiness of his devotees. The Vaishnavas are more than happy to see Krishna driving Arjuna's chariot and treating Yudhishthira with respect. Because these exchanges of love between Krishna and the Pandavas glorify both the Lord and the servants, he chose to serve like an attentive parent. The Supreme Lord constantly fosters his devotees' spiritual development by everything he does. Although fit to alienate all the Dandavas within a few minutes, I perform various pastimes just to entertain my devotees. Just as the fish, the tortoise and the bird nourish their offspring by respectively watching them, meditating on them and keeping them in physical contact. So, so do I maintain my devotees, O lotus-born Brahma. If I just, let's just pause there for some um, reflections. Any questions or reflections on on this, the glories here of the Pandavas? I was, I was just myself, I was considering um, how we might be quite familiar with this type of discussion, how the Lord actually interacts. Recording someone's got two devices i think but if we for a minute if we reflect on the different concepts of god um which is there in the major world religions you find some of them speak quite profoundly about god's affection 
and God's love. Um, but what we're hearing here, or what they have no kind of insight into, is the fact that God ultimately is the person, Krishna, how that love is manifest in the extraordinary way where he's not just someone who is some distant, he's, you know, someone who's just reciprocating through prayer, some, you know, he's a, mm. but he's actually interacting, as, he, as we hear, he's, he's actually there. He's yeah. living with and he's interacting, and here he's interacting with uh, the family of okay. Pandavas. He's become their menial servant in a lot of ways, although they never saw him like a servant and they didn't. But Krishna willingly put himself um, in that position. Mm. He willingly offered, for instance, to it was him who offered to go to. Um, the last final plea for peace before the battle of Kurukshetra. Mm -hmm. Then Krishna went to try and last ditch attempt to perhaps avoid the war. So he went as a messenger. And of course, we know the story. Mm -hmm. They tried to get the Krishna. And then how Krishna is actually driving the chariot of um, Arjuna. So I'm just kind of highlighting this because um, this is inconceivable to a lot of um theists who are actually believing god but they don't but they're missing here we're seeing how god yeah and, and the exchange he has with his devotees is is all based on love he's personally there yeah he's personally there that's yeah that's the main point he, he's personally there so you could say it's the ultimate in the personal conception of god was a different you know some most traditional Fierce or religion speak of God to some degree in a personal way, but here we're seeing something extra, extra wonderful. How he actually is actually there physically. Yeah, his love, and, love for his yeah, yeah. So, 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 so in other words, love is not just a um here. It's not just a um. What can I say? Like a medical, physical description of feelings in one sense it's there but here then these feelings are or this love is actually manifested fully where he's um yeah he's there with his devotees serving them and that's his highest pleasure yeah so, i think i've cut someone off there yeah, so just keep this in mind, um, because because we're quite used to this. You know, we uh, you know we read Krishna book and we read uh, Krishna reciprocating, and I mean I'm saying this because one of my reading deviations. I'm just reading a um, Christian theologian, uh, David Hart. His name. He's he's an interesting character because he's 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 quite um, he's he's he quote he uh, reads um, the Vedas and he reads about. Vaishnavas and he has great respect for Vaishnavas but he's a Christian so there's some crossover there but he never right, he can never fathom what's being described here in the pages of Shima Bhagavatam I was just reading it just now but oh yeah he's been quite quite in one sense quite a um, intelligent person the way he's understanding God but it's all very um, distant it's nothing like this where God is actually personally present and is engaging in the, being a menial servant. Anyway, I just thought I, that was just on my mind as we're hearing this. Um, anyone know, again, anyone can, can refer to a, a well known verse where one of the Pandavas, of the family of Pandavas, they are praying for misfortune? Continue. Yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> I think we brought this up before. That she's so um Krishna would always come. And when Krishna would come, she would feel total relief from any of the atrocities or anxieties that that she and her sons had to face. 
Så mm. vi bara tog sånt tasch och tasch, tasch satsfatt. Yeah, often he wrote, he's bringing this up in a joking, in a sense with tongue in cheek, that um, we shouldn't pray like Queen Kunti, or are we advanced enough to pray to Queen Kunti, that stress and anxiety come, <laughs> so that we can remember Krishna. But, you know, it, it was all beautifully, I mean, the whole drama of the Pandavas is beautifully orchestrated by Krishna. Yeah, it, I, I think it's interesting where, where it says, uh, the Pandavas' misfortune is auspicious. Yeah, we, that was, yeah, we remember, yeah, I remember that as well. He, they, they, their fist, their so-called misfortune was actually fortune. Yeah. Actually auspicious. Mm. Yeah. So, um, and here we can see Hanuman is getting quite ecstatic. And so is Narada. And also Raj Priksh is becoming quite ecstatic. Which is not bad for a person who's just about to die. <laughs> just about. Well, as you know, he's completely Krishna conscious. So living or dying is e as has become irrelevant. He's become supremely conscious of Krishna. So, so these Vaishnavas, they're having a wonderful time glorifying other Vaishnavas. And Krishna really likes that as well. Krishna like, really likes it when we glorify his devotee. Of course, he, lo he likes it when we glorify him, but he likes it better when we glorify his, um, his devotees. So, something to learn from that. Yeah. But, Lavanga um, you like to continue reading? Unless there's any more comments or questions and, or, or reflections here? I just wanted to um, add that you know how Krishna is performing so much services for the Pandavas. Yeah. That way you see, like, um, you see some devotees, they really want to do services for the devotees. You know, when you go on yatras and things like that, they really, really yeah. go out of their way. I'm thinking of, uh, we just had Shivananda Saint's uh, disappearance there or something like that. Yeah. And uh, how he was, um, you know, Arranging all the transport facilities, yeah. accommodation, prashad, everything for all the devotees. So that's coming from those days. And it still happens now. Very much, yeah. Very well, yeah. Yeah, thanks for bringing it out. And, and we do see that in their temples. And we do see that, especially, I would say, on yatras, where devotees actually go beyond themselves to actually serve the devotees and they get they get great pleasure in it. I know when I've been on Paragon, it's I've tried to serve Rashadam a few times on Paragon, but you, you you've got to be um, you've got to really muscle your way in there otherwise because there's so many devotees want to serve. You know, it's like a fight <laughs> to pick up a bucket <laughs> to actually serve the devotees. Yeah, so it's very sweet. Krishna really likes that. And in the mornings in the temple is, is nice as always. Sometimes in the temple, there's uh, more devotees who are ready to serve um, than there are sitting down to uh, take prasadam. Sometimes that's a problem. So. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's, so let's kind of read on and see what else is going to be revealed here in the ecstasy of these devotees. Hanuman, Narada Muni, and Mars Priksha in great ecstasy. So, the Vangalataka, you like to continue from 86? 86, okay. I need the, sorry, I'm not looking at the book. I have it, but it's, um, it's easier to look at the computer now. Okay, 86. It is my greatest fortune that Prita's middle son, Bhimashena, is also my dear younger brother. Commentary. Hanuman has just finished describing himself as unfortunate. But by speaking about the Pandavas, he now considers himself transformed into a most fortunate person. He praises his own good fortune, remembering that he and Bhima are both sons of the wind god. Bhima is the second eldest of the five Pandavas. But among the Partas, the three sons of Panda's first wife, Purta, his place by birth is in the middle. Mother Purta is herself an intimate devotee of Krishna. So Hanuman is even more honored to remember that she is his aunt. By saying that Bhima is Kanyan Vyasa, inferior to himself in age, he subtly implies that Bhima is his, is his superior in character. Hanuman admires Bhima so much that he considers Bhima the better devotee. Text 87. 
Lord Krishna, by acts of friendship, like giving his sister in marriage to the Pandava Arjuna, showed Arjuna full mercy, and that Arjuna bears my image on the treasured flag of his chariot. Commentary. Lord Krishna's sister Subhadra is a direct expansion of his internal potency, and the Lord approved her marriage to Arjuna. Later in the Kurukshetra War, the Lord agreed to drive Arjuna's chariot. These favours distinguish Arjuna as the most dear to Krishna among the Pandavas. Therefore, Hanuman is proud to have his own image on Arjuna's battle flag. Text 88. Without the unconditional mercy of the Lord's most beloved friends, a devotee's loving service can never succeed or bear fruit. Commentary. By now, Hanuman's ecstasy and unalloyed prema has awakened to such an extent that he feels stirred to go to see the Pandavas at once, and he is about to propose to Narada just that. One can never become a recognized servant of the Lord. In other words, one can never enter the rasa of Dasya without the blessings of perfect devotees like the Pandavas. Even if one externally makes a show of such service, one will not reap the fruit of satisfying Krishna and enjoying transcendental ecstasy. Pure devotional service proceeds completely under the authority of the Lord's beloved devotees. Text 89. Um, Therefore, O best of Vaishnavas, most dear devotee of the Lord, let us go together to see the Pandavas and take shelter of them. Commentary. Hanuman's word, words indicate that he considers Narada as blessed as the Pandavas in receiving Lord Krishna's favour. Since both Hanuman and Narada are servants in the Dasi mood, it is entirely fitting for them to visit the Pandavas at their residence and even stay with them to learn about devotional service. Apart from being fit to see the Pandavas, Hanuman and Narada should be able to receive from them special mercy by rendering such services as stunning guard for them at night. Text 90-91. Never in Ayodhya did the Lord disclose what he now reveals in the district of Mathura known as Darka. Countless varieties of supreme opulence and sweetness, one after another, which Brahma, Rudra and other demigods can hardly fathom. These glories expand the love of his devotees. Next page. Commentary. As Hanuman looks forward to the inestimable benefit he and Narada will achieve in Dwarka, he reaches the peak of eagerness. During an ancient time when the Madhu demon ruled Mathura, that kingdom extended all the way to the Western Ocean and included the region of Dwarka. Sri Harivamsa confirms this in the words of Madhu himself, spoken to the son-in-law of Vikantru. Welcome, dear boy Hariyasva. I am happy to see you. Let me give you this, my entire kingdom, except for the Madhuvan forest. Please agree to live here and rule this splendid kingdom. Graced by the shores of the ocean, it is rich with cows and peopled mostly by Iberia cowherds. During your stay here in the district of Saurastra, there will come to be a great mountain fortress fit for the residence of kings and unequaled by any other royal estate. Your vast kingdom will be called Anarta. Sometimes, of course, the land of Mathura is measured by as being smaller. In the Varaha Purana 158.1, for example, we hear the Supreme Lord refer to my district of Mathura extending for 20 yojanas. The smaller Mathura mandala is the area marked by the footprints of Sri Nanda Nandana, who frequently wanders and plays there tending his cows. The supreme opulences of the personality of Godhead are manifest in Dwarka, because Dwarka is the part of greater Mathura. So glorification of Dwarka is also in effect glorification of Mathura. Text 92. Sri Narada said, ah, what are you saying? Something unseen in Ayodhya? It's not even seen in Vaikuntha. Get up, get up, my friend. We shall go there at once. Commentary. Srila Sanatunga Swami comments that Narada is ready to go either to Dwarka or to the Pandavas capital, Hastinapur. Both are equally good destinations. With the interjection, ah, Narada gives voice to distress at not having seen such splendor in Ayodhya or Vaikuntha, and with the repeated request, Utista, Utista, he expresses extreme eagerness to go. Text 93. Sheep Riggs had said, Hanuman, the ocean of sobriety, then sighed for a moment, and after a brief time in thought, he bowed down to Narada and spoke. Commentary. Hanuman's strict loyalty to Lord Ramachandra made him reconsider what he had been thinking. 
he concludes that to go running off to Dwarka, leaving aside his regular worship, would violate his exclusive devotion. So he bows down to Narada to ask forgiveness before saying no to what Narada has suggested. Text 94. Sri Hanuman said, certainly it would be fitting for us to visit Dwarka to see the Pandavas <coughs> and offer them service, for they are in all respects most dear to the personality of Godhead and his consort. Commentary. Two good reasons to visit the Pandavas are to see them and to offer uh, them service. Or the reason is actually one, because seeing them, darshan, is itself personal service and transcendental worship. Text 95. But the Lord is now displaying uncommonly intense mercy and sweetness, more confidential than anything he has ever shown before. Text 96. The, those wonderful playful pastimes are so supremely enchanting that they bewilder even self-realized sages. Commentary. Hanuman is about to admit his fear of offending Sri Krishna and his devotees. Even in Dwarka, what to speak of Vrindavan, the mood of devotional service in the company of Sri Krishna, is more relaxed than Hanuman is accustomed to. So he is worried about becoming confused and doing something wrong. At the same time, he, is, he readily acknowledges that the charm of Dwarka and the intensity of Krishna's mercy there have never been shown anywhere else, even in Ayodhya. Text 97. Just see how your father, how even your father Brahma, grandfather of the world, founder Acharya of the Vedic teachings, was confused by the pastimes of Krishna. Commentary. Brahma is the first of all Vedic Acharyas, the Manus, the Vyasas, and so on. But when he kidnapped Krishna's friends and calves, he was shown such a display of Krishna's supreme magic that he lost his power to act and think. Yeah, just a comment here. So it's very uh, interesting how um, Hanuman's coming to terms with his kind of his relationship with Krishna or with the Lord Ram. And interesting that as we remember that Hanuman is not actually he's in Kim Purusha. So he's not actually personally with Lord Ram. As you know, he 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 remained within the earthly realms. And he's serving a deity. He's fully absorbed in serving, as far as I remember, a deity forms of Ram, Sita Ram, and Lakshma. So you could say, I was thinking like he's a Vajari who doesn't want to leave his service. <laughs> you know, he see, feels himself as being, you know, that's the most important duty. But his mood is quite all and reverential. And as we're, we're learning here now that the mood in Dwarka, compared to Vandapan, is very much one of awe and reverence, but still it's a little bit more intimate than that of the relationship that Hanuman is otherwise used to in his service to Ram. And he's bringing up a very good point here, isn't it, as an evidence. Brahma, because Hanuman doesn't want to do the wrong thing, and that's what Brahma did when he saw the very sweet pastimes of Krishna, the very human-like pastimes of Krishna as a cowherd boy then he made a mistake and he tested that he, he, he couldn't quite conceive or he couldn't really relate to his Lord acting in such a human-like way, such a human-like way that for him it was, he couldn't compute it as though he's, as though he's made of intelligence. So as we know, then we have Brahma, Vimohan, Leela. And this is what, Hanuman is worried about or making the same mistake. And perhaps they're going to bring up, perhaps you might bring up um, Indra as well, who also made a grave mistake in observing Krishna's pastimes in, um, in Raj. So although Dwarka, it's, it, the mood is different, but still we're learning here that because it's his personal family, Krishna is um, dealing in, a, in quite a, mentioned quite in a sweet way. But as we know, nothing like Vrindavan, where actually Krishna is treated as a equal, <laughs> amazingly, and some and who's chastised by his mother, etc. So this is given us, so just keep this in mind. Now we're learning about the mood here, the actual mood of worship. 
or or unreverence. So Hanuman has that, and he and he doesn't. He's a bit as though he's enthusiastically want to join wants to join Narad. Now he's having second thoughts. He doesn't want to make the mistake of being too familiar with Krishna. Yeah, anything on that? Or we can let's see how it unfolds. Okay, you can continue reading Marvel one. I thought I'd just point that yeah. out. <coughs> okay, and text 97. 97. Uh, 98. 98. Yeah, 98. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, what about so what can be said about monkeys like me because how strangely Christian's pastimes unfold as you also know I'm afraid of committing offences commentary if Rama could become bewildered in Krishna's presence Hanuman thinks then I will lose my intelligence the moment I see him someone might try to explain to Hanuman but those who are bewildered like that are jnanis sages attached to dry knowledge Rama became confused because of attachment to his knowledge and high position but pure devotees want to come to the same bewilderment. Hanuman's answer is that Narada himself became bewildered when he visited Dwarka and saw in each of the 16,000 palaces a different Krishna. Text 99. Let the wonderfully varied pastimes of the Lord be the very life of his servants who think of nothing but him. For such devotees, those pastimes always increase the ecstasy of love of God. Commentary. To remember the pastimes of the personality of Godhead is not only his devotee's gati, the aim of all their endeavors, it is a paramagati, the, their only resort and protection from all dangers. I just, I mean, yeah, I just was thinking here as well, in, um, in regards to um, coming closer to Krishna and being cautious of making offenses. I mean, that's why Pujaris have to be very careful. And there are offences that could be made in deity worship and for being over familiar. Um, we'll be reading these offences in deity worship. And I think it's coming up in next week's reading of Harinam Chitamani. But you can appreciate here, like, we have to be a lot more conscientious of how we're acting, how we're interacting with each other, especially when we're serving the Lord personally on the altar we have to be kind of quite conscientious that we're not being over familiar and we're acting in the need of a menial servant yeah i mean that's why for instance um we shouldn't be speaking on the altar because this because it's a point of um, being conscious of the presence of the lord I mean, our altar is quite easy to remember that because it's very small. But sometimes they struggle with that at the manor. They have a very big altar. So it's kind of a big space and kind of you can easily forget this aspect. But anyway, I just mentioned that point that we have to think. I mean, because a lot of you are serving the Lord in different ways in the Pujari department. Maybe or may not be. But many of you are. So especially we have to be quite conscientious, you know, when because we're coming closer to the Lord. So this is what Hanuman's being um, as a, as a servant, he's being very careful now. You know, I mean he's got all fired up and he wants to go, but now he's having <laughs> now he's thinking perhaps not. <laughs> Let's see. All right, you want to carry on? Yeah, even so, I simply feel more attracted to the Supreme Lord in his eternal identity as Sri Raghunatha, the son of Dasarat and the joy of Mother Koshalya, his heart always tender with natural unaffected compassion. He is spontaneously attracted to loving exchanges with his devotees, exchanges free from any tinge of duplicity. He demonstrates how to follow properly the religious duties of a civilized people and he upholds the strict vow of having only one wife. In the shyness of innate humility, his face always looks downward, his eyes fixed on the ground. His exalted character is pleasing to all. He stands with bow in hand, the king of kings, the hero of the city Ayodhya, served by Sita and Lakshman, and with Bharat as his older brother. He rules the race of monkeys as a dear friend of Sugriva and gives shelter to Vibhishana, 
By my hearing of the pastimes of Krishna, the unlimited loving attraction I feel toward my own master has increased. Text 105. Therefore, I think I shall stay here, constantly seeing him in this form and drinking the immortal nectar of his pastimes. Commentary. In essence, Hanuman says that he is not independent. He cannot go anywhere and do anything on his own whim. Even though he knows that Lord Ram is an expansion of Sri David Kanandana, he must continue to worship Lord Ramachandra. Text 106. And when the Lord may sometimes call me for some purpose, by his great mercy, he might allow me the transcendental happiness of serving him. Text, uh, oh, it's contrary. If the Lord desires, then I shall go here or there. Hanuman needs to stay in Kimpurusa Loka to be ready to answer any special request from Lord Ramachandra. And if Sri Krishna in his pastimes kindly calls for Hanuman to assist, for example, to appear on the Kurukshetra battlefield to frighten the Corps of Shold soldiers, Hanuman, of course, will gladly come at once to Hastinapur or Dwarka. Text 107. You are inspired by affection for me. The Lord may call me just to show me the beautiful form I love more than my own life. Commentary. Narada could now reply that since Sri Krishna, in fact, wants the two of them to come to Dwarka, Hanuman should agree to fulfill the Lord's desire. Anticipating this, Hanuman presents another reason for not leaving his post in Kimpuruso Loka. Easier for him than leaving Lord Ramachandra would be simply to give up his life. In Kimpuruso Loka, Hanuman serves his Lord in separation and cannot fully enjoy at every moment the Lord's beauty and the charm of his pastimes. But if called to Lord Ramachandra's side in Ayodhya, if only for some short assignment, Hanuman would leave Kimpuruso Loka at once without a thought. He would never leave for any other purpose. A curious story further explains this service attitude. Once Lord Krishna and Dwarka wanted to break the pride of Garuda and others by showing the steadfast exclusiveness of Vaishnava devotion. So he called Garuda to his lotus feet and told him, please hear my command. You should bring Hanuman from King Purusaloka. Garuda went, approached Hanuman and told him, the personality of Godhead, King of the Yadavas is calling you, my dear Hanuman. Go to him at once. But Hanuman, exclusively devoted to Sri Raghunata, ignored Garuda's request. Angered, Garuda tried to make Hanuman to take Hanuman to Krishna by force, but Hanuman, with the tip of his tail, pushed him effortlessly away. Garuda fell through the sky and landed at Dwarka, where Krishna, amused to see him, said, Dear Garuda, go back to Hanuman and tell him that Sri Raghunata is calling him. After dispatching Garuda again, Krishna turned himself into Lord Ramachandra and made Sri Balaram become Lakshmana. When Queen Satyabhama uh, seemed unable to turn into Sita Devi, Krishna laughing had Sri Rukmini become Sita instead and placed her at his left side. Then the three of them stood waiting for Hanuman at Dwarka. When Garuda met Hanuman and told him of the Lord's request, Hanuman, filled with ecstasy, responded by running to meet his Lord. He took darshan of the disguised Krishna, Balaram and Rukmini and offered prayers and devotion. Very much satisfied with Hanuman, the Lord bestowed on him whatever benedictions Hanuman chose. Text 108. I must be ready to present myself before him without delay, whenever he might call. But now you please go visit the Pandavas at their home and see the supreme absolute truth in his appearance like a human being. Commentary. Having heard Hanuman declare his devotion for Lord Ramachandra, Narada might now want to stay with Hanuman in King Purusa Loka. But Hanuman suggests that Narada take the opportunity to see Sri Krishna in the company of the Pandavas. Sri Krishna in his most attractive two-armed form is the origin of Lord Narayana. Since the beauty and charm of Krishna cannot ultimately be described, Narada should go and see Lord Krishna for himself. Moreover, to know fully Krishna's kindness toward the Pandavas, one must personally see it. Okay, let's just pause there. Um, any reflections on this? About this is the mood of a servant. What's I just I didn't know that pastime Krishna disguised himself at Lord Ramachandra. That's just so lovely. Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't heard that before either. That's quite quite in the past time. Yeah. Krishna's calling him, but he doesn't go. He even ignores Garuda. But this is bringing out something. This is bringing out specific mood 
uh, of a servant. Uh, it's something to be noted in our devotional service as well. well let's try and see if we... Let's, if, what is it specifically about this mood of a servant that is quite unique? That you surrender to one form and you like totally surrender, nothing that matters. Yeah, that's fine. Like, uh, like you see, we have we kind of surrender to Radha Lama Nishan. We go to other temples, we go Radha Gokuna, and we go other places. But our desire is to go back to Radha Lama Nishan. You know, when they sing in Kirtan, they sing uh, all different rituals, rather uh, Gopinath, Goloka, everything. Yeah. You get to say, well, when they're going to say Radha Lana Nishwa? When they, I did that when we went on the retreat. I was thinking, when they're going to say Radha Lana Nishwa? Mm. And then when they say that, your hands just go up and you end up. Mm. Yeah, that's very nice. That's actually true, isn't it? This mm. is called I every different really Every oh, sometimes uh, Murli Prabhu as well. Uh, sometimes they don't say Radha in Ishwar. I have told few devotees when you do sing, you omit our Radha London Ishwar and they apologize. <laughs> next time, please, please make sure that you do sing that as well. Yeah. So this is. Oh, I, um, have, I have a point. Yeah, the devotees have their Ishtadev. Some of you will find the particular Ishtadev, what I found is that generally those. Lords who you spend time serving the most, you develop a natural affection for, and a friendship for. So that wish to do. Yes. Prabhu, can I, can I ask something here? Yes, please. Okay. To the point of what Chandravali and Suniti Priya said, is that is that a, a mood or is is that attachment to that particular deity? Because if it is Krishna, Radha Krishna you are serving, you will be able to see Radha Krishna, London Ishwara, in any one of them. Yes, that's true. But the same with um, what, what Hanuman mentioned, is that in, when, when he hears about Krishna, it reminds him of Raghunath. Yes. His, his ecstasy takes him to thoughts of Ragana, of Lord Ramachandra. Yeah. So that's always where his heart is. So if we are, are doing service at Radha London Ishvara, yeah. shouldn't our heart be also whichever deity we take darshan of? We should meditate that this is Radha London Ishvara. Yes, that's a that's a nice. That's a correct meditation. Yeah, because when I see Radha London Ishvara, I see Radha Shamsundar from Vrindavan. Yeah, I actually feel that it's Radha Shamsundar. Mm. Yeah, because that's your Ishtada. If they're devotees, you spent time with, taken darshan of. Yeah. Yeah, I also feel the same as well when I go to Hungary and I. Yeah, Radha Sham, then yeah. I think of London as well. Yeah, I'm yeah. quite sure when Shiva Ramaraj comes to London and sees London as well, yes. yes, yeah. So, we're just appreciating how very how the Lord personally reciprocates in his specific forms. But, but that's, exact, that's exactly the point here that when Garuda, I mean, when uh, yeah, Garuda comes to take Hanuman there and then he doesn't go and then of course he uh, Krishna transforms himself as Raghunath. Yeah then he so, runs there. Yeah. <laughs> so that no matter who you you do service to that's your age today you should see them in that form whichever deities you're taking Darshan of. Yeah and some devotees will have relationships with different deities as well. Some will have exclusive devotion, you know, their heart is exclusively devoted to one particular form of the Lord, but others it may be, they may have equal affection for different deities. Of course, um, interesting we could bring up here, Harp had an affection for all of the deities which he installed, he had a very personal relationship with. Uh, Nandanishvara, we say, he had a very special relationship. Yes. 
Yeah. Very sweet, very sweet relationship that very much touched Prabhupada's heart. And he has, yeah. as we you know. Yeah. I just wanted to say, uh, mainly for the reason, so the Prabhupada knows how they appeared. When you think of that, so definitely there is very special. Yeah, so they have a special place in Prabhupada's heart. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you for bringing this out, um, Robert Chandrawali. We can all appreciate that very much. I, look, I guess I'm just looking who's present here. I might devotees who are devoted to um, um, Radha Gokul and Nando as well, <laughs> from the manner. Mm. Like, for me, I'll ask something. Like, when I go to Vindavan, I see Radha Sham, uh, I really love it. I love being there. But um, mine, I would just run to Radha Lana Nishov. That's the way I am. What can you do? You know, that's no, it. No. Yeah, so this is very important, like, especially at the time when we leave this world, that's where we want to be within our consciousness. We just want to be absorbed in our lotus feet. Yeah. You know? and, and, and that's what comes by serving the Lord throughout one's life. You become, you, um, you actually develop a loving attachment. That's why Prabhupada says in one place in the Shema, in one purple, he says that devotees of the... Um, all devotees have a specific deity which they're attached to. They no, they they all take shelter of a particular form or temple of the Lord. All the bona fide devotees, they have a particular. And we know Ag, um, Agoswami's had the Ishta Devs as well, isn't it? Famous Ishta Devs. Yeah, Mother, uh, Mother Mohan for Sanatan Goswami. Yeah. You know. so, I think we can appreciate here as well how important um, worshipping the form of the Lord is in our loving development of Krishna Prema, ultimately. <laughs> you know, it plays a vital role, actually serving the Lord of our heart, and we develop fine sentiments of fine sentiments of appreciation each time we, we actually come before the Lord. Yeah, yeah that's a very... But also, I was thinking here as well how um, for Hanuman, service to him, service is more important to him than uh, than anything else. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing for Hanuman is being able to serve his uh, um, his uh, Lord. And he okay if he could go to Dwarka, he could say he's looking at is he's he's. he's careful he's being cautious but it will interrupt his service so he's he doesn't want to discontinue his service and he wants to maintain that service mood and doesn't want to become over familiar so that's why hanuman he's the personification of and he represents um servitude isn't it yeah he represents so we're really hearing about that here are really getting an insight of what it means to be a servant of the Lord. And Hanuman is the personification of that. He's everything about him is service to Lord Ramachandra. There is not yeah. anything outside of that for him. He is made of service to Lord Ram. But still, he's becoming ecstatic hearing about the Pandavas. And it's stirring the ecstasy within him. So he's, yeah. You know, I was just thinking how uh, when Narad was telling him to go to this place, he was so excited. Yes, yes, let's go, let's go. And then he sat back and thought, oh no, till the Lord calls me, I have to do my service here. Uh, we, how different we are. Like, oh, there's Kirtan here or there's a um, seminar here. Let's, let's just go, let's go. My service um, I'll try and cover it. I'll, you know how our mood is. Yeah, that's a fact, isn't it? Yeah, I try and cover. Yeah. It. I mean, there's. I mean, there's one person. I'm sure. Let's try and appreciate this. This. This devotee. See if we can guess who it is. Um, Mother Vimal. Yeah, she never goes nowhere. Yeah. She never goes to no patrons' evening. She never. She never been seen at any function, any house program because it interrupts her service. And the only reason she, the only reason she goes to Puri is to buy stuff for Lord Jagannath. Mm, yeah. So she, you could say, 
she very much uh, her mood of service to um Jagannath. Amazing, yeah. Amazing. amazing yeah. I don't think she's she's so I mean she doesn't function outside of serving <laughs> Jagannath. Yeah. You know, if you if you, if you can manage to persuade her to go to a patron's evening, she yeah. will not know how to relate. <laughs> She won't know how to function <laughs> in the environment. She only knows how to function within the Pajadi part. Yeah. Very true. Very so true. Very true. You know, she, she doesn't function in a social setting outside of that. No. So you could say, let's just say, Hanuman the same. He, he doesn't function. He's not going to function properly outside of um, the mood of service. Yeah. In what she's performing in Kim Purushka. And you know her service to Jagannath on the altar at times when you're dressing. You see, it's not all awe and reverence. It's quite, she's like, you know, Jaggy Boy, you know, he's like quite personal for her, you know? Yeah, yeah, she calls me Jaggy Boy. I mean, I've, I've guess for glorifying Grimley, it's nice to, um, I've never been able to fathom her mood exactly. It's very, you know, it's just, it's, her mood, but yeah, she often relates to him in a very, a very familiar and a very friendly way. Yeah. yeah but at the same yeah. time, she maintains that um, awe and reverence awe and very much. She, yeah. Very much. Yeah. Um, Navadweep would often say to me that um, in many years from now, when Vimala will no longer be with us, like we'll all have to leave this world. So people will be speaking of her service. Mm. But we're lucky to be there. Absolutely, yeah. So in many years from now, people will be speaking of it, you know, about her dedicated service to the Lord, yeah. to Jagannath. Yeah. And there's others as well. There's other devotees throughout the world who are also devoted to their Pacific Lords as well. Yeah, there's probably there's probably devotees that we don't know and we haven't seen who are serving. And you, sometimes you hear about it, devotees, for instance, cooking. I heard devotees doing the cooking in a temple for 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> or Maha Mantra on Inishrath Island. Uh, that's another one, Maha Mantra on Inishrath Island. Who can compare? To, so she actually, inconceivable what she does, the service she does. Dressing all the deities every day, and sometimes cooking the offerings and the Mongolidi sweets every day. Yeah. Yeah, I'll spend time there in uh, in his reference show, some others as well. And she's uh, also, she has this mood a bit like Rimmela. So I can't always understand this part of it, where she's not so keen on any Wells doing service. <laughs> Mahamantra is a bit like that. She's very protective of the service. Yeah, and, she's very yeah. protective of the service and she doesn't even want you to help her. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that, yeah. so that's, that sense, that, it, that does cause some problems actually in, in a lot of ways, but that's her mood. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her mood. So here we so being a servant, so we're hearing about devotees in you know in our own communities, you know, and here Hanuman is exemplifying being a servant. Yeah. Pabu, can I just ask you something? Uh, even okay, this is my little uh, this is what my experience. I came to Krishna consciousness in Dubai, there were no deities, but yeah. and I have not before. First, I have never seen um, any uh, Radha Krishna deities at that time. Uh, after come, of course, I have seen before in other temples, but not in Iskon. And uh, Radha Ras Bihari uh, was the say first deity of that picture only came on my altar. Yeah. And until today, that attachment still there. Until wow. today. Nice. Has, I cannot uh, and uh, something it really I, I was amazed what happened uh, I, I felt their reciprocation once I think two three years ago uh, one festival Archana was right in front of me Wuting, 
curtains opened i can't remember what is the festival it, it was here in london yeah in london i saw immediately rather ras bihari and yeah. i was thinking what's going on with me why like this why like this i couldn't and then i said to archana archana who did this is dress it's amazing so nice and i just told okay. Mr. Matthew makes dresses for Rasa Bihari. Yes, she immediately looked at me. Then I said, she, I said, but I want to say something. I see rather Rasa Bihari. Uh -oh. Hare Krishna. I can hear. Oh, uh, yeah, so it's me. It's, um, okay. I opened my so, eye. So. Yeah, so it's. Um, yeah. So I very um, surprised well, I, I, I couldn't and I was really telling in fact I told this to Vamsivat also see look rather as Bihari see the Radharani it's like that I was went on telling and uh, then she said the same uh, devotee who may so I was thinking about that devotee how much he must be uh, engrossed in his service to rather as Bihari to put a dress like that yeah yeah, so that's it's good to also um, meditate on the fact that um, when we're leaving this world, or perhaps even before that, that mm -hmm. Lord that will appear to you will be your Ishtadev. So for us, hopefully, we. What did you say? The, the, uh, the Lord that you will be, that the Lord that will take you or that will be revealed to you and the, your relationship. Mm. Your Ishtadev would be for your particular Ishtadev, Radha Londonishra, Radha Rasa Bihari. Mm. But, but, the, but the, they will no longer be the observing silent Morty. Mm. They okay. will actually be there in person, but it will be, it will be, for instance, for devotees of Londonishra, it will be the form of Londonishra, but fully an, animated. Fully, mm. fully animated but it will be them and that's how krishna reciprocates with his devotees he actually appears in the particular form by which they worship him so it will get very specific that the form that we that that is the lord of our heart but it doesn't mean i i i, I don't know whom i am really wanting in the sense it's so deep. I only that day I realized it is so deep that uh, I didn't know it was so deep like this. Yeah. So you should keep a photo of um, Rasavi Harry and worship there. All right. It's um hit seven o'clock. Um, we better stop there. Let's stop there, shall we? And takes a very auspicious hundred and eight. Um, oh, yes. Sorry, Raj, we, we, we didn't get to the meeting. But very nice discussion hearing about the mood of Hanuman and his mood of being a servant. We also spoke about also some devotees who are very much in this mood and about the Ishtadev. So much, isn't it? That's just in an hour. So much we've learned just in this hour. Such amazing. All right. Let's stop there then for this week. And um, I hope you have a good <laughs> conscious weekend, different functions, different programs. And I think we have a Sunday feast. Is it? Is it this Sunday? Yeah. 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 The 10th. We have a first feast. Um, Mangalananda does is coming to do Kirtan or Sing. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that's been changed because he's got a dose of COVID. So oh. that's been changed now. Doi Mo oh. will be there giving lecture and uh, Radha Londonish will do Vajans. That's how he stands at the moment, unless he makes a sudden recovery and comes. All right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so look forward to seeing some of you there on yeah. Sunday. For, uh, it's a big occasion after two, three years. Yeah. Finally. Mm -hmm. Okay, Frank, everyone. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.